question 29 which one forms three alkenes on dehydration so we start off with the alcohol because they will dehydrate to form alkenes and the answer is B buta 2 or you see why so this is buta 2 or I'll leave out the hydrogen we can remove this OH and hydrogen from this carbon number one and when we do that we can have this alkene here rather this alkene here and we have to check whether there's a cis trans possibility in this case there isn't a cis trans because this carbon is consists of two hydrogen the same groups so there's only one possible alkene if we remove from this first carbon but we can also remove from this carbon over here the hydrogen here so if we do that we will have a double bond forming over this side and then this one we have to check and we can see that there's a possibility of a cis and a trans coming out if we were to remove from carbon number three. So we have three possible alkenes from buta 2 all. Right, so don't forget to check for cis trans in case you missed out any alkenes. 30. Which one of the alkenes have both cis trans and optical? If you're comfortable with checking in this format, uh, go ahead. If not, I've drawn out the structures here and I'll use the structures to explain. Easiest to check maybe will be the cis trans first. Okay, we'll eliminate those that don't have cis trans. Option B, there won't be any cis trans because this carbon has two hydrogen. Oh, they are the same atoms. So this will have a cis trans. A, C and D could have cis trans and then we check for optical isomerism. We look for a carbon that is joined to four different groups. Right, and then we have a carbon that is joined to four different groups over let's see. Three. Oh, I missed out one over here, let me redraw it. CH3, CH2, CHBR, CH. Okay, this is the missing carbon I was looking for. So this carbon over here joined to four different groups. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is our chiral carbon. So it does have cis trans and it has a chiral carbon. So it will have both cis trans and optical isomerisms. Three one. Which one has giant molecular structure? Your diamond, giant molecular, graphite, giant molecular. This one is giant ionic. So only one and two are correct. Which reactions are redox? Sometimes you can just use one or two of the convenient ones for comparison. Here I use bromine or bromide. Minus one to zero, there is a change. So it is a good indication there's a redox reaction really. So I check the bromide here, the bromide here there's no change so unlikely that this is redox you can also check other elements if you want to I'll check the bromide here the bromide here there's no change so only the first one is a redox sodium hydrogen sulfide SH- minus. which one is correct it contains 18 electrons so sulfur itself has 16 Hydrogen has one and then with the minus charge we add one more to have a total of 18. So this is correct. Three lone pairs of electrons surround the sulfur atom. So you can have the sulfur atom here. It's actually SH minus. So this is the dot and cross diagram. With the minus charge for the extra electron. We have one, two, and three lone pairs. 
Sulfur has an oxidation state of plus 2, that is incorrect. Sulfur has an oxidation state of minus 2. The hydrogen, we assume it to be plus 1. Since it's overall charge of minus 1, your sulfur will have to be minus 2. When water is acidic, aquatic life is destroyed. What can we add to remove the acidity? We can use things that neutralize the acids, carbonates, hydroxides. Okay. Potassium nitrate is a neutral salt, it will not work. So 1 and 2 are correct. 35. Non-metallic element forms pollutant oxide and then under further oxidation it will become or further oxidation it requires half mole of gaseous oxygen in the atmosphere now they give us three options carbon nitrogen sulfur so the first stage will have our pollutants carbon monoxide nitrogen monoxide sulfur dioxide you might be thinking that carbon monoxide becomes carbon dioxide that is true but um, it doesn't really occur in the atmosphere naturally it occurs through burning and all that so usually under the Cambridge requirements okay this doesn't really take place in the atmosphere okay, at least not naturally whereas nitrogen oxides become nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide becoming sulfur trioxide it can take place in the atmosphere so bear this in mind Carbon becoming carbon dioxide doesn't really take place naturally in the atmosphere. Okay, at least not based on the marking scheme. Sulfur dioxide and sulfides are reducing agents, so they will actually slow down oxidizing oxidation of food. Okay, that actually means the food turns bad. Aerobic bacteria will require oxygenated uh, environment, so again reducing agent will reduce the amount of oxygen available, so the bacteria will not be as effective to work on the food. Okay, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen oxides are not really relevant in food preservation, so it's one and two. Okay, the reducing agents remove the amount of oxidants and removing the oxidants or oxygen oxygen and all that will slow down the bacteria. What can we use to synthesize propanoic acid? We can use our propanol, 3 carbon alcohol, oxidize it. So one is correct. We can use our nitriles and then we do our acidic hydrolysis. We can also have our aldehyde with three carbons, propanol, and then we oxidize it using oxidizing agent also. So all three are possible preparation methods. Two two dimethyl pentane. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons and then 2 methyl groups at carbon number 2. So looking at the structures, okay, these 3 methyl groups are here. Then we have our 4 carbons in a row. So number 2 is correct. Number 3 essentially is number 2 read backwards. So 2 and 3 are the same, okay, whereas number 1 is not the structure. Thirty-nine nucleophilic substitution. We have our nucleophiles here, okay, and these carbons are partial positive due to them being attached to your electronegative halogen. So your nucleophile will attack the partial positive carbons, okay, and then they will replace your halogens. So all three are actually nucleophilic 
substitution reactions. 40, we have a condenser and we need to separate our products from the reactants. What we need to take note of is that the products should have a lower boiling point than the original reactants. So if you look at the conditions, bromoethane, we can separate it from ethanol, sodium bromide and concentrated sulfuric acid. These are the reactants. Okay, all these have higher boiling point than your bromoethane. Okay, if you're wondering between that and ethanol, ethanol is hydrogen bonding and this one is just permanent dipole. So this one, bromoethane, has a lower boiling point. So it will come out and it will condense by the water condenser. Ethanol, permanent dipole, compared to hydrogen bonding, ethanol has a lower boiling point. So again, these three reactants, ethanol, sodium dichromate, sulfuric acid, will remain in the flask and your ethanol will come out. So these two experiments will work. The third one, bromo and bromine and ethene, you have to know that ethene is a gas at room temperature pressure. So the gas will actually not stay in this flask, it will actually escape out. Okay, so it will not be suitable for this reaction. The bromoethane will actually remain inside. But in the first place, your ethene might not stay too long enough in the flask to actually react. It might even escape out as a gas from the very beginning. So that's why 3 is not suitable, 1 and 2 is suitable.